Welcome to the lab 1 of the FPGA VHDL lecture series. I am Avinash Somnathan and I would be taking you through the labs. So, to start up with the first lab, we must know the aim. So, the aim of first lab is to control an LED using a switch. That is, when the switch is toggled to 1, the LED must glow. When the switch is toggled to 0, the LED must turn off. So, to do this, we have to write a VHDL program. To write a VHDL program, we take the help of the software provided by Xilinx, the ISC Design Suite. After installation, we get an icon on our desktop with the name ISC Design Suite. We double tap on that icon. On doing so, we get a project navigator window open. So once the project navigator window is open, we must go and create a new project, right? So we go to the top left hand corner, we click the option file and click the option or sub option new project on doing so we get a new window called create new project this window asks us for the name of our project so we give a suitable name in this case let us say our project is switches and LEDs the name of the project cannot have any special character apart from the underscore it can have numbers, alphabets in both upper and lower cases. The location of our project can be changed to any directory we want using this option. After doing the necessary changes in location and working directory, we click the next button. Here we see project settings popping up. In project settings, we specify the hardware, that is, the FPGA type to our software. Then, we also specify the language in which we will be programming the FPGA, that is, VHDL in our case. So, our FPGA that we are going to use is a Spartan 3E, that we select in the family drop-down menu. Our device is XCS100E, which can be found in the device drop-down menu. The package which we are using, specified by the manufacturer, is CP132, found in the package drop-down menu. Then, we let everything else be as it is, and we change the preferred language to VHDL, as we are going to program in VHDL. After doing the necessary changes, we click on the next button. On doing so, we get a project summary about the options that we have created or selected. The project name, the working directory, the FPGA type, the package type, the language which we are going to use, etc. After checking these information, we click the finish button. On clicking the finish button, we get a new window in which we can see our FPGA chip on the top left hand corner under the column hierarchy. Our project name is on top of our FPGA which is switches underscore LEDs. So, to start with the lab, we must program our FPGA. That is, we must add a source file. So, we go to our project and right click. A small window pops up where we click on the new source option. On doing so, we get a new source wizard. This wizard asks us for which type of programming we are going to do. 
Right now, we are going to write a VHDL module for our FPGA. So, we select the VHDL module option by clicking on it. Then, we select a file name. This could be same as our project name. And it has the same restrictions like the project name. It cannot have any special characters. And it can have numbers, alphabets in both upper and lower case as well as the special character underscore. Then we click the option next and a next. Then we see the summary of our project. Then we click the option finish. On doing so, we get a new window open which has a lot of things written in it for us. As seen in the lecture, we have an entity and an architectural part. So, we have the entity and architecture pre-written by the software for us. There is also a library, IEEE.StandardLogic1164, which has been included by default. This library includes all the functions that we are going to use throughout this course. If any other library is needed, we might include it in some later stage. So right now, to start up, to achieve our aim, we must first specify the inputs and outputs of our FPGA. This is done in the entity part. So the syntax for declaring our inputs and outputs is inside the entity in between entity and end we go and type the keyword port notice that this keyword has become blue which is an indication that it is a keyword for the software then we open a round bracket then we declare our inputs and outputs. So, right now we have switch 1 as one of our inputs. So, the syntax is switch 1 colon the keyword in. Again, it turned into blue. In signifies that switch 1 is an input device. In then we declare the data type that is standard logic since switch is only two states 1 and 0 we use the data type standard logic and followed by a semicolon after declaring switch 1 we declare switch 2 if we want to control two LED using two different switches in the same way it is also an input device and also of the same data type. Now we have two LEDs as our output devices. So let us call it LED1 out. The keyword out again turns blue signifying that this is a keyword and the data type for LED1 is again standard logic. LED2 in the same way now before ending the round bracket we must avoid putting a semicolon over here it is part of the syntax that the last declaration in the entity must not have a semicolon instead this semicolon must be put after the round bracket Moving on, we want the state of our LED1 to be same as a switch1. We assign LED1 as switch1. This statement here signifies assignment. LED2 as switch2. Everything is followed by a semicolon. This signifies the end of statement. 
also the statements must be written after the begin this is a part of the syntax after this is done we want the software to synthesize our code that is to create hardware from our code so we go and select the option synthesize from the left hand side box we double click on it and we save our project the software synthesizes the code which we have written synthesis converts our code into hardware this hardware can be seen using the rtl and technology schematic like here switch 1 is assigned to led 1 switch 2 is assigned to led 2 this is the hardware which is incurred from our software code which we have written thus if there is a green tick on the synthesize in the bottom left hand corner then we know that our code has right syntax and it has been written correctly and hardware can be made out of our code now if we make a mistake like missing a semicolon and if we try to save this project and synthesize it again we will for sure see an error to confirm this error we can see a cross a red cross besides the synthesize here down if we go in the errors we can find the description of our error it says unexpected identifier expecting semicolon and if we click on the link it will point to the line number in which error has occurred so here there must have been a semicolon now if i save it again and synthesize it again it will work perfectly fine here the green tick beside synthesize signifies that our code was synthesized properly and there weren't any errors in our code thus we have written a vhdl code to control two leds using two different switches in the next lab we will see some more details about the vhdl language